All right, we are back now with Ambassador Pete Hoekstra, who we think she's going to be the Republican Party chair. Uh, you heard the governor's speech last night. Was there anything that you liked? Yeah, I loved her talking about the lines. Uh, I'm a U of M fan. I went, I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan. I was thrilled that she acknowledged that uh, the University of Michigan is the, uh, you know, they are there, the NCAA uh, football champion. Well, so, so, yeah. Then you must have been deeply disappointed that the Republicans did not stand at that point. Yeah, the. Uh, well, why I, I the pause, uh, the Congressman? <laughs> I don't really care, okay? <laughs> that that's not that's not the important issue whether they stood or you know stood or sat down i went through enough state of the union speeches you know with republican presidents and democrat presidents and if you got a democrat president you know the uh, the other side is going up down up down and you know there's reporters out there counting how many times did they stand up uh, and if it's a republican president okay uh, you know i'm going to wear my uh, i'm going to wear my running shoes today cuz i'm going to have to go up down up down up down uh, and people are counting and so, you know, it's, uh, come on, let, let's talk about the real issues. Right, come on. On a substantive yeah. basis, the content of the speech, apart from the sports angle, was there anything you liked? <laughs> it's, uh, no, I mean, it, 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 there, there are two remarkable differences of opinion here. And it came up in the earlier segment of the show when you were talking about a targeted tax break for seniors, a targeted tax break for this, a targeted tax break for that. And it's kind of like, no, we're not into this identity politics, you know. Uh, I don't want to fall into a group and say, if I can get, if I can just kind of wiggle into this, I get another tax break. Lower the overall tax rate, okay? Uh, her strategic investment uh, fund where, you know, I'm going to give money to Gretchen Whitmer, the governor and the state legislature, so that they can decide where to, you know, what's a promising industry and all of that. No, I don't want her doing that. She has no risk in, you know, she's got no skin in the game. There's no risk for state government. You know, this this whole electric vehicle fiasco, okay, the Chinese battery plants, uh, a technology that's not ready for prime time, okay, you know, the, uh, you can't drive from West Michigan to Detroit and back uh, in your F-150, uh, whatever they call it, the supercharged vehicle without finding a place to charge it. Oh, and by the way, if it gets cold, uh, you know, the biggest parking lot of dead vehicles is the Tesla charging station in Chicago. And we're pouring all of this money in and we're forcing the state to buy these vehicles. And it's like, sorry, this is not ready for prime time yet. And she, the people that made that decision, they're not going to pay the price because if cattle goes down or Goshen goes down, yeah, it'll be future taxpayers that pay it, pay the price. They'll be gone doing something else. To that point, though, she brought up a, a revamped, basically, version of Good Jobs for Michigan, the Snyder era payroll tax cut plan. Um, there's going to be a little bit of changes to what Snyder did eventually put into law, which, you know, sunset in 2019. I mean, do you see any Republican appetite for, like, you're talking of more broad tax relief? It, it, does this not sort of fit that bill or, or do you see areas where yeah but I mean if you, you know, we did this when we balanced the budget in Washington you, you got to do a couple of things you can do broad tax cuts and where we've got a mandated you need to balance the budget okay let's identify where we're gonna have some spending cuts where we're gonna retrench the size and the influence of of big government yeah I'm all for cutting taxes uh, and restraining the growth or slowing the growth or actually shrinking government somewhat if you are the leader of the Republican Party in Michigan, this it's is a question. Going to be win, th yeah. <laughs> this is a question I've been thinking about, though. There's this issue going on at the border in Texas, and there's a power struggle going on between the federal government and the government in Texas. I'm sure you've been following this. Oh, absolutely. And there's this chatter, uh, and I'm I'm curious: is there room in the Republican Party for people who are openly rooting for a civil war? for people who believe in QAnon. Do you welcome those people into the Michigan Republican Party? What I welcome is, you know, working forward and going towards solutions. And yeah, I'm well aware of the debates. I mean, the, I'm reading the opinion pieces that are out there this morning. And, you know, everybody knows what's happening on the border. You know, Governor Abbott, what he's trying to do and other states are trying to do by sending National Guard down there and, and closing the border. Uh, and someone uh, wrote an opinion piece that said, Let's federalize Texas National Guard. 
Whoa, let's uh, let you know, I'm all open for that debate. OK, I know I know where the people in the state of Michigan uh, and where the people in Texas and a but lot of states are. There's but, a Supreme Court ruling now that says, hey, Texas, what you're doing. I mean, these are Republican jurists who mm -hmm. said, Texas, what you're doing does not line up with how our nation works. Yeah. And you're, you're saying that Joe Biden should just say, oh, we've got a Supreme Court rule. We've got the Constitution. But yeah, Texas, go ahead. Keep, well, no, keep, what I want is I want Joe Biden to actually enforce, you know, the rule of law and secure the border. It's very simple what we want. We want Republicans. And actually, I think there's a lot of Democrats <clears throat> who want a secure border. Take a look. In Chicago, there are people now that are calling for what? Getting rid of their status as a sanctuary city because, you know, thir they've now welcomed in. 31, 32,000 people, so, so and they in, can't afford it. So you're in favor of the U.S. Senate passing some type of bipartisan immigration reform measure right now? Take a look at the content, okay? Take a look at the content. Get a, get a good border deal, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of other dynamics going on in, Lance, or in, in Washington. I recognize that, uh, but take a look at exactly what the content of a, uh, a border plan is. Uh, we expect, uh, you know, we're going to have a Republican president. We're going to have a Republican Senate uh, and those types of things. We're going to keep the House. Uh, if we can get as good of a deal as what we will get with a president, a Senate and the House, and you can get that now, you'll probably go for it. But you know what? You're not going to get that deal. So, so someone, just back to my first question, I just want to I want to nail you down on this. If someone comes to you and says, I believe in QAnon, and I want a position as a district chair within the Michigan Republican Party. Pete, should I run or not? They're welcome to run. You, sh you would say you should run. No, I would say you are welcome to run. Same you would thing welcome that, to run. Yeah, you know, okay. and you know, what, you know, because we're also having this debate now about whether we want candidates chosen, mm -hmm. okay, by caucus or by precinct delegates and those kinds of things. No. I know what would have happened when I ran for Congress. And I said, I would go to the delegates and said, hey, I'd like to run against the 26 year incumbent uh, who's chairman of the uh, National Republican Campaign Committee, who has all the sentimental attachments, right, uh, to you and the district here. They would have said, sorry, Pete, you don't qualify. All right, because uh, I know that's what they did. They, you know, they didn't welcome me to their events uh, or those types of things. We went to the grassroots and I ran a campaign with the grassroots and we beat the establishment, okay? If folks want to come in, uh, I, so are people welcome to come into the party and compete for positions? Absolutely, all right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, the, uh, I'm sure there are people that voted for me. She said, Pete, do you know exactly what they stand for and all of that? So mm -hmm. I'm like, no, but you know, the, the, you gotta win on election day. We'll give Emily the last Just, word. Yeah. While we're talking about this big tent of a party here um, and who, who's welcome, I think there are a lot of people who didn't feel welcome under Christina Caramo's Republican Party. Um, this American Life had um, an interview with some Muslim um, leaders within the party that felt a little bit disenfranchised at times. Um, you know, certainly some people who aren't Christian could have been turned off by her overtly Christian message, um, particularly Jewish members of the party. Uh, what, what kind of repair work do you have to do to make sure that everybody feels like they can be a part of the party? Well, you go out and you tell them what our agenda is, okay? You talk about what our philosophy is, and we don't talk about, you know, you're a good Republican or you're a bad person or you're in this category, you're not welcome, okay? Uh, we did this when we did the contract with America. The first time we took over uh, Republican control of the House of Representatives in 40 years. We didn't say, you know, you're welcome, but you're not, although you know, we, we might reconsider that. <laughs> the, uh, but you know, you're welcome, but you're not. What we did is we put together an agenda of 10 items, contract with America and said, when we get elected, these are the things that we are going to do. And we'd love to have you join us on this path to implement this agenda. And we made, we had a historic election uh, and that's the model that we will find. That's the model that we will put forward for the voters in the state of Michigan. An agenda, a positive agenda, the results and the vision that we expect to achieve. Come on, it's gonna be a great ride. Uh, you know, after 94, what did we do? We balanced the budget, we cut taxes, and we grew the economy. That's the, ki that's the kind of vision and mes message that people 
will embrace, not this other stuff that has gone on. Mr. Hoekstra, to make it clear, you're not using this position as a stepping stone to run for office again, correct? You know, everybody's got to negotiate. Uh, I have to negotiate with my wife. Uh, she does not envision me being on the ballot again. And that probably a, would not support it. In, is that a Sherman statement? <laughs> probably as pretty close as you can get, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.